Hey, I'm, uh, I'm just sitting here on the porch thinking and um, hopefully we won't be uh, disturbed too much by trains and such over across the way, but it's, it's a lovely day, very, very cool, but lovely. Nice time to be outside. And I've just been giving some thought to, uh, to some scripture. Uh, I don't really have anything scripted out. I just wanted to talk from, from my heart to your heart. And I, I, this touched me and I think there might be uh, others of you out there that this will touch. Um, in Mark uh, chapter 12 verses 28 through 31 uh, the Lord's been teaching and a, a scribe asks him what I, I think is a, an honest and a, and a good question. He says uh, what is the greatest commandment? And the Lord tells him well the, the greatest commandment is to Love the Lord your God with, with everything you've got. Heart, mind, body, soul. Everything you've got poured into loving loving the Lord your God. Then he goes on to say something uh, very deep. He says, there's another one that's a lot like it. It's also very important. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have, have heard that passage or heard that scripture or just heard a, 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 a good saying like uh, the golden rule or something that kind of embodies that same idea. And um, it, it, it's really a, a great command. It's something we should do, but it's something a lot of people struggle with, loving your neighbor as yourself. And of course, it can be difficult to love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, some people are hard to love. Some people can be difficult to get along with or, you know. But um, something that, that hit me about that scripture is not so much the challenge in loving my neighbor as myself because they are difficult to love but for a long time, I struggled with that, and I, I believe there's a lot of you out there that do too. Being able to love your neighbor as yourself because you have a hard time loving yourself. You know, a lot of people have a, a, a low opinion of themselves. Maybe they uh, had an overbearing parent, or maybe they were abused as a child, or even later on in adulthood, and it, it gave them a low opinion of themselves. They, they begin to not value themselves as they should. Um, and that can make it hard. If you, if you have a hard time loving yourself, it, how are you gonna love other people? It's, it's a real challenge there. Um, you know, and there's so many other things that, that make it hard for us to love ourselves. Uh, for me, it's, a lot of the dumb mistakes I've made in life. And so I look down on myself for those things and place a lower value on myself than I should. And, and, and you know, if you're just not feeling right about yourself, it's hard to feel right about other people. It's hard to, to give when your, your well is dry, you know? And, uh, you know, there, there's so many things that go into that. There's, you know, there's people that find it hard to love themselves because they base their self-worth on what they perceive other people see them as. Uh, there's people that have a hard time loving themselves because they're caught up in addictions, uh, you know, and, and the addiction makes you look down on yourself, makes you feel less than worthy because you can't beat this. Um, so many things, so many things that, that the devil throws out there to, to make us look down on ourselves about and um, makes it hard to love other people. And so I got to thinking, well, how, how do I love myself and view myself as more valuable, view myself as, you know, what I really am and, and not what my struggles or my failures or addiction or any of this says about me. Um, 
Because the truth of the matter is, your struggles, your battles, your addictions, they're not who you are. They're, they're the challenges you face. Um, but they don't define you. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not whether you win or, or lose, whether you can overcome or not. Yeah, I told you there'd be a train. But uh, that's, that's not who you are. That's, that's what you struggle with. That's what you've got to overcome. And uh, just the same as when you do overcome, um, it's not that you've suddenly become a, a champion, but now you can say, I overcame. You know, I, I was a warrior all along. Just because I was getting my butt kicked, I kept fighting and I was a warrior. But now I've won a battle. And um, so I, I wondered, man, you know, how in, in light of all these things that we battle with, how do we see ourselves for who we really are and the, see the value that we have so that we can love ourselves and love other people? <laughs> and, and I began to search scriptures and, and think about things and it became clear to me, it's not how other people view me, it's not even how I view myself. Um, that makes up who I am, but I can improve the view of myself and understand my value if I understand how God sees me. You know, God sees us as pretty valuable. Uh, right from the get-go, he had a special special place for us. You know, the, the book of Genesis in the first two chapters gives us the creation account and it you know, it, it talks about God said, let there be light, and there was. And he said, uh, you know, let there be a separation between the, the dry land and the seas, and there was. Between the earth and the sky, and there was. Um, all these things he spoke into being, even the animals. He said, you know, let there be beasts of the earth, let there be beasts, you know, of the air. You know, and he just spoke it, and it happened. But when he got ready to make people, when he got ready to make human beings, he said, let us make them in our image, referring to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, uh, plural, yet one. He said, let, them make, let us make them, let us make man, mankind, in, in our image, like us. Then God, once he had decided to do this, took the time to make mankind using his own two hands bible tells us he, he formed us from the dust of the earth he took the time to use his hands he didn't just speak us into existence we were valuable to him from the get-go then it goes on to say that he actually breathed into our nostrils the breath of life he gave us life from his own his own being and we became living souls no other creature on earth is, is referred to as a living soul. We are unique and different right from the beginning. So God obviously sees us as different, sees us as special. Um, but the, some of the other scriptures I came across, and, and you know, like I said, I, this is not scripted. This is just what God's impressed on my heart to help me see myself in a different light see my value, love myself so that I can love others. And uh, just a few scriptures um, that I came across to see how God thinks of me. Um, Psalm 103, um, verses 11 through 14, talks a little bit about how God views us. And one of the verses says, uh, For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. You know, God remembers that we are mortal beings, that we are made from the dust of the earth, that we have our imperfections that he allowed and our, our struggles and our battles. He remembers that. He knows we're going to make mistakes. He knows that uh, we're going to have things that bad decisions we make. We're going to have bad thinking. We're going to 
we're going to make bad decisions, maybe get caught up in some sort of addiction, trying to find a, a way to deal with the life that we live. And um, he remembers that. Uh, another scripture I came across was uh, Jeremiah 29 11. I think this one's really cool. God says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. You know, he looks on us with our imperfections and our struggles. And when he thinks of us, he thinks of us as, hey, I want the best for you. I don't I don't want bad things to come your way. I don't I don't want your end to be destruction. Uh I got a I got a plan that that I want to give you uh, that gives you a future, uh something to look forward to, good things. Um so God is thinking of us kindly. Um uh, uh another scripture that that came my way which really helped me uh 2 Peter 3:9. Uh, the Lord is not slack or lazy concerning his promise, as some people consider laziness. Uh, but he is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord is patient with us. He puts up with a lot out of us. He, he, he looks at the times when we make mistakes and bad decisions and the struggles we have. And when he looks on us with, with our addictions, um, he keeps holding on. He keeps holding on to hope. He keeps being patient. He keeps tolerating and, and, and cheering us from heaven that we can get over that. Um, he doesn't want our end to be destruction. So he's not willing that any of us should perish. He doesn't want us to come to destruction in this life or eternity. Um, he wants us to, uh, to be able to overcome our sins, overcome our struggles and addictions. And, you know, the, he says to come to repentance. Repentance means, hey, I've, I've hit a point where I know it's a problem. I'm changing my mind about this, and I'm going to take take action to overcome it. Um, of course, the greatest repentance that we have in life is to acknowledge that we need Him, that we want to be in a relationship with Him, that He loves us, and that He made a way for us through Jesus Christ coming and living a perfect life and dying on a cross and rising again to 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 pay the price for our sins and to give us a hope of new life and that's the ultimate repentance and that's what his ultimate hope is for us but uh, you know he, he, even people that have done that they have their their struggles he remembers their dust even after you become a Christian he knows that uh, some of these old struggles can come up and sometimes that addiction might reach out and grab you again and you have to fight that battle Again, it's, it's like fighting in a war, you know, just because you win one battle doesn't mean that you might not find yourself in another one with the same enemy. And, and he knows that. And, and he doesn't look at us as, well, you blew it. You're, you're useless or you're just no good or you're just always going to blow it. He looks at us like, okay, you know, I'm going to cheer you on and I'm going to be patient and, and hope that you can win this battle and over this enemy again and hey one step at a time one battle at a time one day at a time get better and stronger and and receive what i have for you revelation 320 jesus says to us behold i stand at the door and knock and if any man will hear my voice and invite me in i'll come in with him and and dine with him and um that's not just a picture of, you know, hey, a, a one-time get-together and eat and maybe com have some conversation. It's a, it's a picture of relationship. Of we're going to get together. We're going to spend time talking about the things that you need to talk about, that you want to talk about. I'm going to spend time focusing on you. Um, it, it's, it, 
it's about a relationship. So many people get the wrong idea about uh, God and Christianity. Oh, it's a set of rules, or it's a way I gotta live, or if I can connect with God, then you know it's some miraculous transformation. We're still people. Uh, we're still human. We we'll still have our weaknesses and our battles, but now we've got this relationship, and that's what He wants. He wants us to be part of His family and to rely on him and talk to him about our struggles and he's there ready to be be there for us and to to lift us up and to take care of us and to um to be our friend uh you know one passage of scripture says that you know we can we can cry out abba father that's that's not like crying out oh reverend father that sits on a high throne and and i am just a worm but you know, if I keep your rules, you'll you'll be merciful to me. No, that's that's like climb, when it says Abba Father, we can. It's like saying you can climb up in his lap and say, Daddy, Daddy, real personal. You know, um, Daddy. You know, this is this is what I'm feeling, or Daddy, this is what I'm struggling with, or or you know, on a good day, say, Hey, Daddy, thank you. You know, I'm just. Thank you for the strength. Uh, thank you for the peace. Thank you for helping me out through this, you know. That's, that's an amazing thing that the Almighty God, creator of the universe, looks at us like this and, and wants to be in that kind of a relationship with us. That's just, it kind of tears me up a little bit, I'll be honest with you. It's powerful stuff, you know. And uh, one more scripture that just spoke to me recently as I was I was looking for how to view myself as God views me and and it was um, 2 Corinthians 618 where God says I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters says the Lord Almighty Almighty God, the one that needs nothing, the one that is all powerful, all, ever existent, says, You will be my sons and daughters. Can you just wrap your head around that for a minute? If you accept that gift of, that He's got for you, accept that forgiveness of your sins, enter into that relationship with Him, you're not just a a subject of his kingdom that he's being merciful to or or, or or blessing if you do right you're a son or a daughter you're somebody that even when you mess up you still belong to him you're somebody that he wants to give good things to even when you don't deserve it you know you I don't know how many of you out there have children but think about your own children you love them all the time even when they're being being boogerheads <laughs> you love them and you want the best for them and you want to give good now you might have to you know help correct their behavior a little bit because because you see it's harmful to them you might have to guide them a little bit you know but it's because you love them and God Almighty looks at you that way he loves you and he wants you to be his son his daughter and when you look at it like that, when you've got Almighty God that took that much time to make you, to make the first man and woman, the uh, scripture tells us that even we now, when we are in our mother's womb, he knows us and he's, he's designing us and, and building us and we're just a marvelous thing. And even now, you know, we're still the specials the first man and woman was. And to think that Almighty God, no matter what you do in this life, no matter how bad you blow it, He's waiting, He's cheering you on, He loves you, He wants you to turn away from that in His strength. He'll give you the power and the strength just got to ask and he loves you so much he just wants you to be a son or a daughter you know God Almighty loves you that much 
you should be able to love yourself. You know, you should, if he's patient with your problems, you should be able to say, well, I can be patient with my problems. If the one who is perfect can overlook and give me strength for this, then surely I can remember that I am dust and that I'm not perfect, but I can battle through this. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not terrible. I, I'm just a person struggling and, and, you know, God loves me. I can love me. And eventually that love can overflow so that you can love your neighbor. Just, just a few thoughts here. Just a few thoughts. Uh, I hope it touches your heart like it did mine and helps you to see yourself for the, for the valuable person you are and, and to love yourself and to, you know, to eventually be able to let that love overflow.